fear is always an invitation that you are evolving regardless. So what I mean by this is you are either intentionally evolving or you have outgrown an environment or a situation, a belief, a story. Something is not working for you anyway anymore. And what you often find is you get to this point in your like in your life. It could be parenting, it could be a marriage, it could be the work that you're doing. Um, it could be your health, it could be an environmental situation, but your soul is saying like, I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. Not this, not this, not this, right? Like there's a part of you that's screaming out, not this, not this. And fear is an invitation to evolve in some capacity. But here's the catch. We have been taught and conditioned to believe that fear we need to run away from. So your brain is designed to keep you alive. So you can say, and they do say, your brain is designed to keep you safe. But what people don't know is that survival and safety are not actually the same thing. So there's the primal part of your brain, like literally your physical body, your mental body, they were designed to keep you alive. But when they think that harm is in like you're in harm's way, it's going to go back to the familiar to keep you alive. But when you put the emotional quote unquote body on there and you're starting to experience a lot of emotional turmoil, like fear, guilt, shame, um, anger, resentment, and you desire more ease, more joy, more fulfillment, more abundance. This is where you have to override your primal instinct to survive. So when women say to me, I am living in a survival state, but I'm scared to change, that is your cue that fear is asking you to evolve. So you are either consciously taking action in your life to evolve and you are getting emotionally uncomfortable, like actively day-to-day habits, behaviors, doing the emotionally uncomfortable thing, and you're scared because you're like getting outside your comfort zone, or you're not taking any action and you are frozen and you're in a shame spiral and you're afraid of what is going to happen if you don't change. So fear is part of the growth journey, regardless if you choose to take action or not. So you can't actually run away from fear. It's always going to be with you. So you might as well figure out how to co-create with it. So if you learn how to co-create with fear, what you're actually doing is learning self-awareness. You are learning to co-create with the primal, intuitive, survival instincts of your body. And you're saying, oh, that's just like the hardwiring. That's the programming, right? So now I'm going to take conscious action, not unconscious or reactive action. I'm going to consciously create the life I want and take specific action to get to where I want to go in my relationships, my health, all the things, right? My work. Um, And when you choose that, you are actively taking ownership for the life that you want. So you actually technically do have more control over your life when you are an active participant of your creation and not a passive participant. But here's the kicker. Consciously and culturally, we have not been taught the skill. So when you think about it, right? When you think about how we've grown up, we have been grown we have been taught to listen to adults We have been taught to follow rules. We have been taught to get education, check certain developmental life boxes off. And when you do that, you in your mind believe that you are being successful. You believe that you are doing the right thing, but you are still not living life for you. You are living life for other people. 
So when you're living life for other people, you may not be in a chronic state or fight or flight or fear, right? You may not, but you're not living from the inside out. You are living from your head. You are living from the shoulds. You are living from this expect, this external expectation. So here's the challenge is you start checking these boxes and most people, I would say on average, live most of their lives, half of their life. And then one day wake up and say, this is not for me. This does not work. And oftentimes women come to me when there's like a huge trigger in a relationship. So something in that relationship is triggering the crap out of you. It may be raising children. Um, it may be a partnership. It may be, you know, you're having a financial challenge, a health challenge, a time and energy challenge. Uh, something in your life is challenging you to evolve but it is triggering fear. Fear is so like, it is such a data collector. It is what I call like the biggest breadcrumb of all. But when we've grown up and we've watched grown ass adults run away from everything, everything that makes them emotionally uncomfortable, it is so difficult to run towards it, which is why doing the opposite is really, really scary. There's so much, um, like science behind this, not even just the, like, think of it this way. If your identity is to be a rule follower and you've lived half your life thinking I've done everything right, like that's the story you tell yourself. I've done everything right. I went to school. I got good grades. I got married. I had children. Like I followed the cultural expectation. I did all these things to belong and to fit in. And then one day I woke up and I was like, not this, not this, not this. Something is out of alignment. It's not just that one little thing needs to change in your life. It's that your whole identity needs to change. And when people come to me and they're in that state, it is absolutely terrifying, okay? So when you're like, OMG, I've been so avoidant in all these areas of my life. I don't have the skills. I don't have the life experience. What actually happens is your brain runs back into a survival state and you are frozen because you're like, you have this all or nothing mentality Be that even taking the tiniest baby step feels like death to you. So if this is you and you are in a situation where you're like, why do I feel frozen? I know what I need to do, but I'm not doing the thing. Like number one, we need to mentally take ourselves off the hook. We need to take that mental pressure off of ourselves that we're doing something wrong. You're not doing anything wrong. But the fact that you feel so paralyzed in fear of taking any action, you just need to logically tell yourself, the reason why I'm experiencing this is because this is no longer in alignment for me. That your life will give you so much contrast of what you don't want to show you what you can have access to. Your life will, sh will give you so much contrast of what you don't want to kind of catapult you and push you and challenge you to face the things you don't want to face. Now, why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because I'm speaking from personal experience that what you resist will persist and grow bigger. And I don't know how long ago it was, um, but I started co-creating my life um, and using my brain as like thinking of it as like a different person, like dis, you could call it disassociating. I don't know, but I was observing my behaviors, um, from an outsider perspective and then kind of like co-creating with these like primal parts of myself, like, Hey, we're okay. We're okay. We're safe. I would say the other big challenge here is that I have a primal, like not a primal, I have a core belief that if I have a desire, it is my responsibility to feed and nurture that desire. This I had to learn over time because as a woman, I was taught that desire equals bad, right? Desire equals you're a bad person. You're being selfish. Uh, you're greedy. 
but because I had so much life experience of contrast, that was like, not this, not this, not this. And then multiple things happening in my life that forced me to show up, um, where like paying attention to desire was not a, like, it wasn't a privilege. Like I had to do that from a place of survival. I realized, and I kind of figured out the game that when I listen to desire, when I listen to my inner desires, um, and I could talk to you, I'll tell you in a minute, like what that means. But when I was listening to inner desires and I was acting on those desires, I would still feel guilty. I would still have a lot of the conversation of like, you shouldn't do that. That's selfish. What are people going to think? Like the fear of being, you know, fear of judgment and all of that. But I pay more attention to desire and I also pay more attention to playing the game with my brain, then I don't spend a lot of energy caring what other people think. So I'm very focused, like linear focused on my own inner bubble. And I spend very little time finding evidence of why I'm going to fail, of finding evidence of like why people don't like me, finding evidence of the judgment that people have towards me. I also have this crazy belief. Um, you know, you may have heard other people say this before, but they're like in a hundred years, no one's going to remember you. We're all going to be dead anyways. Right. There's like a Billie Eilish song that talks about that. Um, and I often think about that. Like I think about that um, I think about people who have passed in the last year. I think about people who have passed in the last decade. And I always think this is just a temporary existence. And so I'm very motivated by like how I, it's not even how I want to feel because that's not what motivates me. What motivates me is how people remember me and the people close to me. So my children, my family, um, the legacy I want to leave, meaning the legacy for, for other people. But I know that in order to get there, I have to take really, really good care of myself because if I don't, and my cups are empty, um, I'm not going to get very far. I'm not going to be able to, to leave that meaningful connection that I really, really desire for other people. So although this process was very motivating, fear was a beautiful motivator when I started because my first kind of fear that I remember I had was feeling like I was failing as a mother. And I hear this from a lot of women saying like, am I a good mother? Am I a good mother? And it's like, that is so subjective. Like, what does that even mean? Right? So when I started a spiritual connection with that, uh, with fear, what I realized is the thing that I fear really has nothing to do with the fear itself. And so the goodness that I was craving, like, am I a good mother? I was like, what is that definition even mean? Like the fear of feeling like I'm failing as a mother, that fear pushed me towards myself. Like it literally pushed me to massively understand shit tons of skills, take massive action, get the support that I needed, face all of my actual fears to realize that that fear of failure, like my biggest fear of failing it was forcing me to heal. That's all it was doing. It was forcing me to look at the things that I didn't want to look at in order to grow into the woman that I desired to be on this earth. And my children were a huge part of that because I had to, I was like, I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. And it's like, what does it even mean to fail as a mother? What does that mean? I was just projecting my own wounds. I was projecting my own fears. And I wanted to leave my kids with a different legacy and reminder that um, the one that I remembered. Now, here's the thing. I don't even understand what that means, like having a fear of not being a good mother. Because I can also see that when we have a fear, right, and we start blazing the path because we're afraid of becoming something or we're afraid we're going to lose something. So we start make, taking massive action. The pendulum actually swings and you're always going to leave imperfection, right? So I've realized that fear itself is a guide. And if you have ever taken this ambitious, emotionally uncomfortable journey to, to become anything, 
you either feel the fear pushing you behind you. Like it's like co-creating with you. It's like, come on, we got this. We got this. Or you're going to feel the fear on your chest pushing you down. And so right now in my current life circumstances today, I feel the fear pushing me like this wind behind my back. That's like push, push, push versus this energy that I feel on my chest where I'm just sinking and I'm diving deeper into a black hole. Now here's the challenge. And I talked about this today on one of our group calls inside of um, my program. Um, I was saying, if you choose to just stay in indecision in your life and you're not making, um, you're not making a decision. You're just like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. You're not moving forward, but you're also like sinking back into a hole. Well, there's going to be pressure on you. You're going to feel the pressure on your chest and you're going to feel the pressure on your back. And when you feel it in both spots, what's actually going to happen is it's just going to fear is going to keep applying pressure to you until you crack. That's all it's going to do. It's just going to like, boom, 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 boom. And this is what I mean when I'm talking to people and I'm like, you got to make a decision. And they're like, I can't, I can't. And they use their partner. They use their children. They use the time. They use money. They use like their brain is so stuck in fight or flight or freeze that or fawn and they don't take any action. And when they do that and they believe their brain and they're not even just taking the tiniest step, when they do that, they're just staying frozen and the pressure is still there. It's always going to be there. You're going to feel it on your chest or you're going to feel it on your back. So I consciously choose to feel the pressure come from behind me and push me and co-create with me instead of being avoidant. When I'm avoidant, the pressure is on my chest and it's pushing me down. And when I get very, very avoidant, I feel the pressure from both sides. And that's kind of like the diamond in the rough, right? That's where they're like, diamonds are created through pressure. Yeah, great. But I don't, I don't want to be under that pressure all the time. So I proactively will take action on things because I have been in a state of contrast so many times in all areas of my life that I don't want to be feeling pressure from both sides. So I will try to actively live in a state of abundance in all areas of my life so that when shit hits the fan, right? When life happens, I have an abundance of resources. I have the ability to create more time. I have the ability like to create more energy. And I definitely have the ability to have more than I need financially. And the reason why I do this is because I have experienced the contrast and the pressure of both. And it cracked me. And when it cracked me, it broke me. And when it broke me, it broke me open and I was forced to create a new identity. So if you are somebody that's sitting there and you are shitting bricks because you are feeling fear and you're like, I can't, I can't, I don't know how this is not only the invitation from fear to take action. This is an invitation from me to say that if you don't take radical responsibility for the ownership that you want in your life, life is going to take ownership. Fear is going to take ownership and it is going to own your life. So you have to face it. You have to look at it and you have to say, you don't own me fear. Let's co-create together. But I have the power and I'm going to lead you. So there's my love note for today. I would love to know what you took away from this. Send me a message on Instagram. I love hanging out with you guys in the DMs. And that's it. Fear is always an invitation to evolve. You just need to learn to co-create with it wild, wisely, not wildly. I guess wildly as well. Co-create with fear.